This episode of Bex Bug Out Survivor may contain scenes of graphic violence, and swear words of a sexual nature, and scenes of nudity that some viewers may find offensive. But probably doesn't. Now the concluding part. Happy Trails. I bought with me the Climate Static V Hammock Pad Inflatable. I did bring it out last time, uh, but I only had a thin quilt and didn't work. So I bought with me something a lot warmer, a lot thicker. Now I reckon a sleeping bag is going to be better than a top quilt for that particular kind of air pad. Although I've only got a t-shirt on, it is mid-March, it is cold, but the last time I came out, I made a crucial mistake of walking in with a couple of jumpers on and my big thick coat, and just the walk alone had sweated me up. So the lesson I learned is to de-layer when you're walking. Rookie mistake, obviously should have known better and took my own advice. getting stupidly cold now there's a track running up now and I have to decide whether this is been man-made or whether it's an animal run and I don't want to get caught out tonight there's the run or the footpath whatever it is so I just need to look out for some trace evidence see if there's any hoof prints or dog prints, there's something here, a print, three toes here, small, and I'm just going to check the track all the way up. The fact it looks consistent may indicate it is an animal track. I haven't seen any human footprints but on this fence here something is dug to get underneath it right I can get my pack off we're here now what I want to do is show you a different way I'm setting up the top and the hammock now this is something I wanted to film just as one episode this technique because um, although it's pretty simple nobody else does it and I like it but I'll try and explain the why for's and how to's as we go along I think so I'm gonna give it another go now easy to follow but it's pretty unique An elastic loop come around the tree web in a couple of times two is about enough to make a prosit that slides up and down the tree webbing and of course under tension it's not going anywhere on the end of the ridge line on top I've just put a simple carabiner in and I can adjust the height of the top just as I would a tree to tree ridge line which is everyone's favorite way of doing it you put tree to tree ridge up and you can move your top left or right now I still have the ability to do that to move it left or right higher or lower um, but it's just connected 
all ready to my tree straps rather than being lashed around a tree. I've only gone round a tree the once. I'm gonna peg that out. I can still move left or right. Got strong winds predicted tonight. I bought some extra cord because I don't think I bought enough. This end here with the ball, I know is head end. So between the arm steel and the first gate over to the top. hammock to the tree webbing top to elastic on the prosit which is also on the tree webbing and I'm overhead height here this one requires your feet to be higher elevated than your head stop your sliding towards the foot end so now I'm gonna get in this when I peg it out um, it's going to be a lot more taut. Strong winds tonight, so I've got my little homemade tarp pull out. So I'm going to peg all the way around, get the air pad uh, and blow that up. Just got these bottom ones to do in the centre. So that's one of the tarp pullouts that is on there. See if I've got uh, some spare cord. This is all the cord I got. I've got some spare cord in there. I'm going to put this spare cord onto the tarp pullout. I've got a feeling we are gonna get absolutely battered tonight. Now what I'll need to do is to get my poncho tarp and put a roof on that hammock. And what this is gonna do, hopefully, is to seal in a lot of the air that I'm breathing in so it won't be so cold. That leaves me at two corners, this corner here, this corner here, and this is closest to my shoulder. This other corner I'm going to throw over, and that will be the corner that's going to isolate my toes. The bottom insulation is going to be the Climate V Hammock Static V inflatable, and uh, it's insulated to a degree. Oh, just check them all, still tied in. Yeah, it's insulated to a degree. Last time I didn't have good success with it and it didn't perform as well as I thought it may. And I've concluded that that was because I was using a duck feathered insulation rather than something like a sleeping bag, which is what I've bought for tonight because the Climate V has these hollows and valleys like that, which you're gonna see in a minute. I think a sleeping bag would fill them hollows and valleys a lot more. It takes about, I think I measured 19 breath inflations. Now there is a little pump sack that um, you can purchase for these and it helps a lot. Uh, with the inflation so you don't get out of breath. 
and there's a vicious rumour going around that if you breathe air into these that it will make the inside of your mat mouldy. Now there's a video on that subject matter coming up in the near future and it is absolute baloney. It's, uh, there's absolutely no evidence to it at all. In fact, some of the companies that make these have said that it's safe to blow in. Our studies on years of Thermarest pads have shown that breath inflation is perfectly safe for you and your pad. I thought it might have been one of them rumours that have been bought around by the actual fabricators of these mats to sell more pump sacks. And it's backed up with absolutely zero evidence or proof. Fanciful claims need fanciful evidence. The mat in. This is the only bottom insulation I've got. I've bought a reflector pad. Hopefully that will throw back some of the energy. This is the side with the one-way valve, about 20 breaths, and uh, should be good to go. You need big lungs for this. I'm going to show you how I configured the two tarp pullouts. Pull out guy ropes are here and here, and I've tied two knots which I'm going to put over the trekking pole and peg it down here. I'm going to put a reflector under that this time. Reflector pad. The buffalo sleeping bag and inside it I have put in this which is my top quilt. I think it's probably duck down. Goose feathers are going to be tiny little things like that. Baby goose feathers about 800 fill maybe 900 fill but I'm happy with this. Works great as an inner insulator. But that is my insulation for the evening. It's going to go directly under the uh, inflatable. So it's between the inflatable and the hammock. I'm hoping I can elevate uh, that lower temperature just with this uh, silver reflector. This silver reflector has the air bubbles in. And I haven't worked out how I'm meant to get in and out of this. And tonight I'm going to bring this part down. I'm more concerned with what's happening below me rather than what's on top. If you've got top insulation like a sleeping bag, a quilt, a blanket, whatever you trust, and suddenly it stopped being warm for you, what has happened is the insulation underneath you isn't good enough. There's nothing wrong with the top bit. And it, it took me a, a couple of goes at failing to know that. I've had really good quilts and sleeping bags, put them on the ground or in a hammock. And I'm thinking, why am I so cold on the top? You're cold on the top because the insulation is failed underneath and your whole body cools right down. So make sure um, you invest in the best bottom insulation you possibly can afford. With hammocking it can be a pricey old thing, but I would rather just save up for a whole year, even if it's just five or 10 quid or five or $10 
a week get to the end of the year see how much you've got and then learn a bit more about goose feathers because it's small it's compact very lightweight and will take you down to some low temperatures i do have working systems but if i was to show you that each and every time i went out then technically you see in the same episode as far as i'm concerned last time i came here can't remember what kit it is about the top was certainly lighter the culprit of the weight is here as well which is the dd three and a half by three and a half which you haven't seen yet so the polyester top here is going to be great while we've got heavy uh, wind and strong rain and then I'll dig out my nylon top next month, maybe the month after, when it's finished uh, blowing the gale. So orange box stove, uh, I bought both parts out. That could make the windshield like that. The orange box stove will fit on there. And there's enough here to run a camp of about four days with half of one of these left brew set and i've got coffee uh, and whitener inside here i'm quite happy with the tarp pull outs but i am going to put more permanent tarp pull outs in um, i'm just going to get some webbing and glue it in What I'm going to do is measure how much water exactly I need to make one flask. Which leaves me some left in there. And just boil that much up. I cannot find my spoon. I've got a feeling I'm going to have to improvise. Just using the orange box stove lid. So adapt and overcome. I have whitener in here. Well, I can kind of guesstimate, you know, how much I'm putting in. Ooh, tired. So this is tonight's dinner bag. Some nice olive oil because I'm going to fry up my homemade stir fry. On a ketogenic diet, you're basically only eating one meal a day, your evening meal. I'll have a keto coffee with, you know, um, an unsweetened coffee with plenty of double cream in it, you know, to get the fat levels up and uh, a big blob of butter. And then that'll fill me then until tea time. The nuts, which are really great for ketogenic diet, that was out the British Army ration pack. Unfortunately, the oats are not on the ketogenic diet, but it's, it's only one day. So I'm going to leave the hot sauce out with my dinner, and that brew is already steeped. <sighs> I'm so tired. It's just not the same when you've been used to sugar all your life. Oh. 
Why am I so tired? I'm going to put some oil in the pan and then put my stir fry in. I'll have to find something to stir it with. I've swapped five packs with the same kit. Absolutely same everything. Some packs worked better than others. I went with the biggest one I had, 80 litres, because I am not going to carry this home tomorrow the way I bought it in. I've got three new tarps. So why three tarps? Because you can't just use one tarp for all the hammocks you have because all the hammocks I have are different lengths. Too short a tarp and the hammock sticks out the ends. Too long a tarp and a short hammock where I'm going to run into problems with the lines that are coming off the tree. Three new tarps each are going to fit uh, my eight foot hammock, this nine foot six hammock and my 11 foot hammock and there's an episode like I said coming up on measuring your tarp to your hammock. Coffee. So at the time of recording this mid-March it's still cold enough that I'm bringing my stainless steel bottles with me so I can heat the water in my pan tip it in here and I've got a hot water bottle but um pretty sure next camp is going to be a bit warmer uh, um, the winds are going to die down and I won't need these and I can transition back to my lighter weight water bottles the plastic ones I don't want to put water in my pack or on my chest or anywhere so I found a good way to carry water and we'll have a look at that episode in, in the next couple of weeks um, because some of the tent camps you're going to see how I carry water in so at 52.6 52.4 and in real money 11.4 I'm going to keep this temperature gauge on the inside with me because I want to know if this little um, poncho liner over my hammock is going to significantly keep the interior of the hammock warm I've relocated the two pull outs going to be a case of trial and error if I needed this tarp raising uh, I don't think I will tonight but all I have to do is unpeg it loosen off the prussic here and slide it up the tree webbing okay just hit the floodlight so I can get my dinner on now sometimes what I do with these meals if I'm not gonna do a boil in the bag is I just shove this on the dehydrator. Oh, it's quite a lot there, it doesn't look it. Yeah, I can dehydrate that, that looks absolutely gorgeous. Wow, I'm looking forward to that. Still not found my spoon. Need something to stir that with. I'm just going to stir this with a beaner. So a satisfactory dinner there. I enjoyed that. Um, I feel quite replete. I've got a reflector under tonight. Hopefully I've got the right sleeping bag for the right pad. And that is important because not all pads are made equal. Before I got into the hammock and zipped it all up, I was at 10.6 Celsius. Let's see what we're at now. 15.7. Wow. Up five degrees just by putting a wooby over the top of the hammock. It is made quite a difference. Incredible. Ooh. 
Ugh. Right, saves getting out the bag. Try not to drink that in the morning. It's half past ten and the head end suspension has just given away the bottle it went through that failed but luckily this red pad it just might have saved my backside because i it was quite a gentle plummet to the ground not nice so i've just about got cozy so i am gonna try and get asleep again so until the morning as usual, nighty night. <laughs> morning, morning, morning. Have a look at this here. This mysterious ball of light in the sky denotes it's going to be a nice day and it is springtime. <laughs> Chilly last night though. Oh. And the pad uh, was okay, it wasn't brilliant. Half ten last night, the suspension on the hammock failed. What had happened is this bar that goes across this metal frame was sitting diagonally, causing it to twist. So I had a soft landing, but I'd lost my good pitch. But I just put in a hitch there, and that's held. So these uh, bottles here can come out all together. I must have got off to sleep relatively early, you know, sort of before one. It's half past eight now, coming up top section of insulation worked really well more or less had my quilt on most of the night uh, and I wasn't zipped up but I did this morning I managed to zip up and have my quilt and the top section nice and warm the bottom section underneath me different story however there was a cold spot about that big on my small than my back uh, and my backside as well and it was like that all night it did it last time as well it did it the time before so I I don't think I'll be using this inflatable again which means I know for sure that I am a quilter I like my under quilts I had the reflector underneath the pad I then took that out and put that uh, directly underneath the sleeping bag but on top of the pad it doesn't matter which way round I put it it still didn't improve its thermal dynamics any more than it did I mean no doubt it'll keep away the cold you know the extreme cold if it does dip below zero but it's never going to be warm you're never going to feel like an under quilt makes you feel where it wraps up around you like this jacket and you instantly feel warm it's never going to do that in my opinion but however it may do for you uh, all people are different people have different metabolisms uh, people are just different so because it doesn't work for me doesn't mean it won't work for you I'm just giving you my experience of a few nights of having that inflatable in with me so what started off as 900 grams of insulation then I had to add in another kilo and a half of sleeping bag to compensate for its design I'm gonna pack the hammock system and just leave the tarp up so I can get under that and have something to eat or at least a coffee when the suspension collapsed and hit the floor 
I did have a soft landing because of the inflatable but my interior lighting system that snapped that's just an LED strand it's only about two quid that maybe three quid it's not there to replace so I'll replace that other than that a bit it was a good night's sleep um, and I've woke up and the sun's up because usually I'm up before the dawn I'm up well after the dawn so I must have slept pretty good I've deflated the air pad and I'm just going to stuff everything including the sleeping bag and top quilt straight into the pack And the top I'm going to take down and put into the top hood. webbing it's already connected to the top that goes in and then it's just the bits and pieces and my bits and pieces are a couple of water bottles a couple of tent stakes I still have air left in the mat which is why it's taken up the Bergen but I have accounted for that because I've done this technique before that's all my tent pegs accounted for I kept my eye on the temperature last night to see if there was a differential worth carrying that wooby I maintained an inside temperature of somewhere around 20 degrees most of the night so most of the night I didn't actually zip up the sleeping bag I just had the summer top quilt with the wooby over I only zipped up like I said just when it hit that bitter cold bit I zipped up the sleeping bag there was absolutely no moisture on the wooby blanket at all I half expected it to condensate because the human body expels about a litre of water in breath evaporation and it was dry as a bone now I do have air gaps head and foot end we saw that when we made the video on the wooby so it dissipated that vapor quite well with the through breeze dry as a bone I expected condensation but it didn't happen so I'm chuffed with that I kept my electronics warm by putting them inside my glove for the night so I'm gonna put the stove on and make myself a brew I was going to have my porridge with peanut butter in but instead I'm just going to have a coffee and that's because on a ketogenic diet you just don't feel hungry well I don't um, I just have the one evening meal rather than trying to get my energy through sugars I use natural sugars in my body to give me the energy that's worked for me the past few weeks another reason I like this 80 litre brand it is I can 
put a bedroll swag inside it. Can't believe I'm sitting here in the sun, waited for this moment, this very exact moment all winter to sit under a tree and just watch the sun coming up. So the pan and stove set may have been a little overkill, if I'm honest, but it just changes it up a bit. Some people prefer a hammock and air pad. Some people prefer quilts and a hammock. There's no right or wrong, it's whatever your preference is. My preference, I'm a quilter. I'm pretty sure if I'd have bought my quilts with me instead of the uh, air mattress for the hammock, I might have slept straight through. A wooby covering your hammock, it'll add a good five to 10 degrees Celsius to your system. And most of the night, remember, I only had my summer top quilt on. I did bring out my sleeping bag to go over that. Um, that was my emergency insulation. And I did zip up my emergency insulation somewhere around um, seven o'clock this morning, maybe half six. As far as I'm concerned, you know, I made it for the night okay. Um, had I have got up when I was cold, the sun would have already been up and I'd just be up an hour earlier than I am now. I've got a couple of mummy pods as well. One I made myself, one I bought um, online. The one I bought online needs modifying. The one I made myself works absolutely brilliantly. Again, we're talking bulk and weight. Something I would need to carry out in one of my Bergens. I don't know next time whether to bring a tent set up. Because everywhere you go in Wales is uphill. And you never get any flat terrain. Uh, you're very lucky if you do. Which is why a hammock is uh, good for me. Lots of trees in Wales, very hilly, so a hammock is better for me. Uh, but I, I love my tents. Two new pads to bring to you to show you, one of which I'm blown away by, absolutely blown away. The other one is, is pretty good as well. I'm looking forward to putting one of them in a tent, maybe coming here, finding somewhere a little flatter. That'll do for me. So this is the full loadout, just loose filled, um, which is why I like this pack, because it has the ability to do that. Quite a successful camp. I, I know I'm not really into pads in the hammock, that's all. Anyway, before I go, I'll leave you with some pearls of wisdom for camping. And it's something my granddad uh, taught me. He said, when it comes to camping, whether it's in a bivvy, in a tent, in a hammock, he said, always, always, no, wait a minute, no. It was never, never, um, no, always, never, no, always. Always.